So this is uh, today's topic. And uh, again, we're curious of our function. So this is our problem first. Um, this is our problem. And uh, um, and in 449, so um, we have actually shown, we have actually shown that um, not just for quadratic function, even though um, a majority of the time in uh, 440, uh, 449, we were talking about a, a quadratic function, but uh, um, we have shown uh, like necessary condition. The first one is, uh, the gradient of f at the minimizer, at the local minimizer, I mean, if it exists, is zero vector. And the Hessian matrix at um, this minimizer is greater than zero. So um, what we mean a matrix by a matrix greater than zero. So let's record here. So A is a matrix. And A is greater than zero, which means for any X vector in Rn, and uh, that is not zero vector, uh, X transpose AX is greater than zero. So this is a definition of a positive matrix. I mean, A and A has to be uh, symmetric. Otherwise, uh, it's, um, it's not making sense to talk about uh, A transpose AX, okay? Um, this is a problem we are interested in, and uh, then um, our gradient decent algorithm is just uh, the k plus one iterate is uh, k iterate subtract alpha is our learning rate subtract gradient of uh, evaluate at the current iterate. And today, today um, we'll try to show, so the theorem, uh, let me check. Um, so the theorem says the following. It is, uh, So the rate of convergence is, here we go. The rate of convergence is one minus um, alpha mu. So the theorem. So let F be, first one is, uh, L, um, let F be uh, the gradient of L is uh, L Lipschitz, all right? This means the gradient of F is Lipschitz continuous. It means uh, for any X and Y, we have this relation, okay? And if we don't have any subscript on the norm, it means uh, two norm, it means two norm. And the next is uh, um, F itself uh, is mu convex. Okay, so F is mu convex. So last time we learned Last time we learned, so let's recall, last time we learned uh, convex, strongly convex and mu convex. So um, for example, where was it? Um, okay. So this is, a, this is a standard convexity definition. It's basically saying uh, this line is above the function. If we change uh, this to, um, if we change the 
non-strict inequality to a strict inequality, then it says it's strongly convex. And the next is mu convex. So uh, where was it? Okay, so here we go. So a uh, mu strong convexity is not just, so not just um, the line is above, um, not just this line. So for any, this line is above this, there has to be a gap, okay? So that what uh, mu strong convexity means geometrically is this straight line connecting two points. So if we choose X and Y, and if we draw a line in the middle for a certain point, so this point has to be like, has some distance away from um, this point right here. Okay, so is mu uh, convex? So this means that uh, um, basically, um, so what happens is f of y, so this is for any x and y in the domain of, uh, in Rn. So we assume f is defined in Rn is greater than f of x um, plus, y subtract x dot gradient of f of x, then plus mu divided by two, y subtract x um, L2 norm square. Okay, um, this is the setting. Um, if we have the setting, um, so what happens is, uh, um, if we have the setting, then um, the gradient descent, this algorithm. So uh, let me try not to use that. All right. So the gradient descent algorithm, and this is for k equals zero, one, two, blah, blah, blah. Um, it converges linearly then for an alpha that is less than or equal to, of course, uh, our learning rate or step size has to be uh, greater than zero, okay? So for an alpha that is uh, greater than zero, but less than one over uh, L. And by the way, um, if we learn 449, we know that, um, we can actually show L is the maximum eigenvalue of the Hessian matrix, all right? At any point, like, uh, so at a point we have a Hessian matrix and we can find its eigenvalue at every point. And then L is like the maximum possible eigenvalue uh, for every F, okay? And last time, last time uh, one of us, Josh, mentioned that, uh, um, like uh, essentially like the Lipschitz constant, this L is an upper bound of the derivative. So that's actually true for smooth function. Um, so let me, um, let me reiterate uh, what Josh uh, said like last time. Okay, so this is, this is like the, uh, the first characterization of L. The second characterization of L is uh, is L is an upper bound, i.e. an upper bound of, sorry, this is Hessian matrix, okay. So upper bound of the derivative, okay. So this is what uh, L means. And um, we have to restrict our learning rate or say step size to be less than one over L. So um, that's why in the common machine learning package, we sometimes we see um, like L being default, um, like 10 to the minus third power. And uh, actually last um, semester, we demonstrated in 449, if we choose alpha too big, I mean, in the coding lecture, if we choose alpha too big, we'll see this oscillating pattern, you know? So even though we hope alpha to be big because it converges faster, but when we choose alpha too big, we'll see non-convergent behavior. And then for 
alpha being this, um, the algorithm star is converging to x star, which is our minimizer linearly. Okay. And the in the rate that it's x k plus one subtract x star square is less than one minus alpha mu um, k plus one x zero, which is our initial guess square, i.e. the rate, i.e. the rate of convergence the rate of convergence is the square root of this guy. Okay, square root one minus alpha mu uh, square root. If, if we take alpha equal to uh, one over L, um, the rate of convergence is, uh, is like one over mu divided by L. So uh, if we are interviewing for a, let's say a grad programming optimization, and uh, this may be, you know, an interview, in, interview uh, question, maybe uh, the interviewer will ask us, okay, um, suppose a function is smooth and uh, convex, you know, a mu strongly convex and smooth with Lipschitz constant L, for the gradient and what is the rate of convergence of the gradient descent. I mean, this is like uh, somehow optimization 101. Okay, now let's show it. So proof, oops. The proof, if we have learned 449, uh, we've see, we, we have seen this kind of proof um, like a couple of times um, is first we write down the iterative, this relation, okay. And then we subtract the minimum. So this is a typical um, procedure and it's called the error equation. So we have this error equation here, okay. And next we try to exploit the fact that, so uh, I will directly uh, write down um, like the gradient F evaluated at uh, uh, X star, like the local minimum. Um, this is because uh, this is zero vector, all right. So let me still open up the chat in case I didn't see uh, the question. Um, and this is our error equation, all right? Um, like in 449, uh, we have shown, because we know that F is a quadratic function, we can represent this gradient by a, like a matrix times a vector. And then we can analyze, so, let me, uh, let me just quickly, okay. Let me quickly like uh, recap what happens in 449 to give us, you know, some perspective of how this works. In 449 is we know that gradient of F, so in 449, um, so this is like an extra block. So in 449, we know that um, F equal that, you know. So let me just ignore this term, you know. So uh, so if F is uh, this quadratic, and then we know that gradient of F, yeah, let, let, let me still write on that, okay. So then we know that gradient of F is uh, AX subtract B, all right? And then if we plug in, uh, this back here, um, the B will get canceled. And what happens is we can rewrite the left hand side equals identity matrix minus alpha. So I think I used Q uh, in, the, in the 449 lecture, so, all right.
and we have this relation, all right? Then, um, because we want to reduce our error at every iteration, we require this one. So we take Cauchy Schwartz, okay. And then we have, so by Cauchy Schwartz, by Cauchy Schwartz inequality, we have uh, this. So this is the norm. This is the norm of this identity matrix subtract alpha Q. And then we require uh, the norm of this matrix is less than one. So we analyzed that um, the norm of a matrix, I mean the two norm of a matrix is nothing but the eigenvalues. So um, if we wanna an upper bound, it's essentially we wanna up, upper bound of the maximum eigenvalues and we want this one to be a contraction. So it has to be less than one and blah, blah, blah. So this was um, the 449, what we did in 449, okay. In 450, like uh, we reiterated last time, F is not a quadratic function anymore. For example, F was uh, uh, loss function uh, cross entropy. And uh, how do we do this? The idea is we want to use um, like uh, what we've known. First, we take the norm on both side. Okay, so um, again, um, I want to emphasize that whenever we write down the norm. We just mean like a two norm, okay? If there is nothing like a subscripted. Um, all right. Next is we wanna expand this. So, um, and how do we expand it? If for two norm, uh, to expand it, it's easier to work on the square version instead of the standard version. So we take square on both sides, okay. And then um, we just use the quadratic formula. So for example, if we have a vector u plus v square, it's nothing but a u norm square. So it's nothing but a, like a u plus v dot product with u plus v. So we will have essentially u dot u, which is u norm square plus v dot v, which is v norm square and then plus two times, basically we plus u dot v and v dot u. So they're the same thing. So it's gonna be two times u dot v. And we apply this formula, okay, here. And let's see what happens. I mean, if we haven't learned uh, 449, so we can basically ignore this, just follow um, the new proof. The new proof applies to a much broader class of functions. Um, and uh, what we will have is gonna be, um, so the left, whoops, the left is still this square. The right is gonna be, um, this and then plus alpha square gradient of f x k subtract gradient of f star uh, square and the minus because we have a minus sign here so it's minus two times uh, xk subtract gradient of uh, uh, x star, which is zero by the way, dot product with this xk subtract x star. All right. Now this is where, um, we use the uh, Lipschitz 
continuity, uh, which is, uh, let me check my notes. So, um, so this is a minus sign, by the way, this is alpha. And we, if we want to, it less than the thing. So uh, we want it be, uh, let me think about it. So uh, if it's Lipschitz continuous as less than, but multiply with the negative, so it's greater than. So here we wanna use, actually we wanna use convexity. Okay. And in the homework problem, in the homework problem, I believe, um, we have used, so um, let me add here. So strong convexity. So, so mu strong convexity. Um, says f of uh, y greater than f of x plus y subtract x dot with uh, f gradient of x and then plus um, mu divided by two, um, y subtract x square. So if we think about this, what I wanna do is we know that this is zero, right? So, um, and then this is nothing but this guy dot with this guy. So if we think, if we re kind of rewrite using this, okay. So what we have here is we basically, we let uh, y to be x star and x is just uh, uh, like x k. So what happens here is gonna be um, so we rewrite, we rearrange the term a little bit. So we're gonna get uh, x. Uh, let me think if uh, it's true. Um, do we have x minus x star here? Yes, okay, so that's fine. Then we have this uh, x star subtract x, k, um, dot with gradient of x, k is less than x, so we have, uh, this is, uh, so this is plus than, oh, okay, then that's fine, that's great. Um, so we have, this is uh, less than x, f of x star subtract f of x k, then subtract um, mu divided by two, x star subtract x square. Okay. And now we plug in this back here. So let me uh, erase this uh, inequality. And uh, let's continue below. If we think about this, this is uh, x star subtract uh, xk, and we essentially we rewrite it as uh, uh, minus x star subtract xk. Okay, so which is exactly this term right here. And uh, we have this two, uh, two right here, right? So uh, we just uh, plug it in and we will get, um, this is, uh, the inequality above is less than x um, k subtract x star square plus alpha square gradient of uh, f of x k uh, subtract uh, gradient of x, f of x star square. So this term, this term later we will use the Lipschitz continuity, but uh, not right now. So we use convexity on this term and uh, what we will get is gonna be plus, uh, we're gonna have is a plus, plus two times 
uh, f of x star subtract f of x k. And then uh, we multiply two here. So it's gonna be subtract mu uh, x star x square. And this whole thing multiply. Let me multiply alpha in front just to, to emphasize it. So hopefully I didn't make every one of us lost, you know. So um, the idea is uh, um, the idea is essentially is, um, is essentially we so uh, from a high perspective. Um, so from a high perspective to view the proof of the gradient descent is because of uh, these two conditions. So because of these two conditions, we squeeze F in an envelope of a two, like a quadratic function. This is the essence of proof, but uh, it has lots of, uh, I mean, technicalities in it, uh, which involves using uh, lots of formulas. And, uh, uh, but uh, essentially it is, uh, we wanna squeeze this F in an envelope of two functions. Um, but now, um, and then now we use, so this is convexity. Uh, right here is mu strong convexity right here. And next is Lipschitz continuity. Okay, so next is uh, L Lipschitz for uh, gradient of F. So what happens is uh, we know that, uh, then we have this, um, Then we have known that this is uh, F is uh, gradient F of uh, X K subtract gradient of F of X star square. So without the square, uh, without the square, it is less than L times X K subtract X star. So now we, we have a, a square here. Um, so we have a square here, square here, um, and which means uh, we're gonna show. Um, okay. Um, I okay, let me think about it. I think we need uh, something more on this, which is uh, we have to show, um, okay, so we have to show more. Um, so we use the Lipschitz continuity to prove that uh, um, this is true, okay. So um, let me still first write down this, okay. So Lipschitz continuity of F implies S1 is bounded by that. Then we wanna show if uh, uh, Y equals, so Y is like our next iterate and Y equals X subtract. And let's just pretend alpha is one over L. So this is one over L gradient of F um, at X. Okay, and then what we have here is f of y subtract f of x is less than minus one over two l uh, gradient of uh, f of x squared, okay? Um, so here actually we have to use a Taylor expansion uh, we reviewed last time, okay? so. Uh, Taylor expansion. Um, we reviewed it last time. Um, that is, so uh, what happens is we have this Taylor expansion, which is uh, plus gradient of uh, f of x dot product with. Um, Uh, 
with y subtract yes y subtract x and uh, uh, plus one half so um, plus one half y subtract x um, transpose the Hessian matrix evaluated at some point, okay, between x and y, and then dot with uh, y subtract x. And because we know that, we know that um, f is Lipschitz continuous with L, okay? So f of y is less than or equal to uh, we have this one is less than or equal to this L. So the third term, we can rewrite it as we can rewrite it as one half L y subtract x uh, transpose square. So it's going to be uh, this transpose time that. And we treat, so basically um, we have this x t a x trans x transpose a x is less than um, like lambda max of x square. If uh, lambda max is the maximum eigenvalue of A, okay. So now we have this, and now we plug in, we plug in what is Y. Y is like our next iterate. So we have F of X subtract one over gradient of F of X is less than F of X. And now we plug in Y as this in, in this relation then we will have this is plus uh, gradient of F evaluated at um, like uh, um, like X and then dot with, so Y is, this is Y, this is Y and then Y subtract X is nothing but minus uh, gradient of f of x, okay. And then we plus L divided by two, y subtract x square. And this is, uh, this vector is uh, y subtract x, okay. So now, uh, if we look at this, all we're gonna have is, uh, um, oh, by the way, um, we wanna, rewrite this term as well, but uh, let's uh, do it in our next line. So we're gonna have f of x plus, actually minus, minus one over L gradient of f x square, okay, which is this. And then plus L divided by two, but we plug in y subtract x equals one over L. So equals one over L gradient of f of x square here. And this is, uh, this is the right hand side of uh, here, okay. So this implies, and now we evaluate everything. Uh, we have a square and this is one over L. So we have one over L square and it cancels with one copy of L here. So it's minus, uh, 2L here and it cancels with one of, uh, so we we know that this is two divided by two L, so it cancels with one of uh, the term here and we will obtain, this is F of X, Y is less than or equal to um, F of uh, X subtract one over two L gradient of F of X is norm. And this is if F has an L Lipschitz gradient. Okay. 
and uh, um, and of course we know that um, and of course we know that um, for any okay so and of course we know that for any um, like for any y this guy and we further know that the local minimizer is less than or equal to this. So we establish uh, this fact as well, okay? So it's like the gap between our current iterate. We always think about X as our current iterate, which is XK. So the gap, the gap um, of our current iterate evaluated with our local minimum, the function value gap is always proportional to like the square of the gradient. It's it's very much like okay, we envelope our function at a local uh, with a quadratic function, and uh, we measure like uh, the quadratic functions uh, their difference, and that difference can be can be like quantified by this. Okay, so now let's resume the proof. Um, right here let me let me check okay right here yeah so uh, which is uh so we're at right here okay so let me uh add this uh, add a block here and now it's back to Double star. So we have used mu convexity. The next step is we use uh, um, is we use the limiting term uh, like we have promised, and if we apply it, we find that. So um, what we have that is uh, we just apply to this term. And what happens is uh, we move this term to the left. So what we have here is uh, one over two L gradient F of uh, XK. So now we replace X by XK here, okay? So we replace X by XK here. And then um, this is, and we plus this term to the left, we subtract this term to the right. We will have, this is less than f of x, subtract f, f of xk, subtract f of x star. And moreover, um, square, sorry. And moreover, we know that we know that our alpha, our alpha is some number um, like less than um, one over L. So the left side here, and by the way, this is zero, okay? So, um, so this term, which is uh, alpha square, gradient of f of xk square, okay, is less than or equal to one nova l square. Um, if we multiply l here, okay, so we multiply um, Let me check. So it's less than that. And we know that the gradient of f of xk square is less than, we multiply this 2L to the right. So it's gonna be, here we go. So it's gonna be 
alpha square L F of X K subtract F of X star. And this term, for this term, we use uh, uh, convexity. And next is we use, okay, mu is a non-negative number. So next we use a non-negative, uh, mu is a non-negative number. So we use mu actually is a positive number and uh, in star, okay, double star. This term is like a subtract a positive term. So we can remove, actually remove this term. And this implies So this implies x k subtract x star two norm is less than. So now we combine everything, and uh, um, we make use of. Uh, so wait a second. Um, no, no, no. So this is a positive term, which is greater than zero. So okay. So we combine them. Sorry. So we combine it to the first term. So we're gonna get one minus alpha mu x k plus one subtract x star square. And then we use what we had in the second term. So we use what we had here in this term. All we're gonna get is uh, plus two alpha L f of x k subtract f of x star. And then we plus what we had right here. So we plus a two alpha. All right, so we're almost done. So we plus two alpha, uh, but this is, as we can see here, of x star subtract f of x k, okay, so. So now we're almost here. And now we use the last fact of uh, um, our proof that is, uh, that is alpha is less than or equal to um, one over L, uh, which implies, we just borrow one copy of alpha L here, which is less than one, okay. So we use this fact here and we can see these two terms will be canceled. Okay. So, um, so this implies, uh, actually the left is square. So we have, let me see the time. Okay, so we're just in time. Um, it's less than one minus alpha mu and uh, x k plus one. I think uh, I missed some something here. I think this is, sorry, this is xk plus one, my bad. And this is xk, okay. And now we have, finally we have the contraction and this is xk. Subtract x star square. And now we're done. This is like our next iterate, okay? The error of the next iterate. And this is the error of the previous iterate. So it's contraction. So this is the error of K plus one iteration. And this is the error of, uh, of the Kth iteration. If we choose alpha small enough, which is uh, um, less than one over L, and we can see that the error of the next iterate is less than previous iterate, and we can uh, apply this formula iteratively, and then this implies 
if we apply this formula iteratively, and this holds for any k. So if we apply this formula iteratively, and we have this uh, desired result, which is, uh, which is if we have our initial guess like this, and we choose alpha small enough so that this is a number less than one. And as we can see here, um, so the convergence happens. So this actually implies convergence uh, when uh, k goes to infinity is because uh, if this is less than one. Okay, so if one minus alpha mu is less than one. Actually absolute value. Okay, so we choose a small enough alpha so that this is true. Normally we choose uh, uh, one over L, but uh, uh, the, the, this is the, one of the key is we kind of do not know L uh, in the actual application. And in Friday's coding lecture, uh, we'll see that uh, how um, in an actual implementation, like uh, how this embodies in uh, the PyTorch, like, uh, so we'll implement gradient descent in PyTorch and uh, we'll see how it goes. So that's it for today. And uh, um, so I'll stop recording. And if we have some questions, um, like quick question, you're, you're welcome to stay here and ask.